Ladies and gentlemen, in this Rig Gaming Intercom video, we have some information regarding the Nano as well as the Fury. So, of course, the Fury X is out in very limited quantities at the moment. It's actually like gold dust for some suppliers. But for many, while the Fury X is certainly very exciting and very powerful, it probably isn't necessarily the most exciting. Um, card out of the whole lineup. For many, it will be the Nano. And we actually have some information which hints that the GPU may well feature the fully fledged um, Fiji XT core. It will actually feature 4096 shaders, which will have 64 GCN compute units, 64 ROPs. Unsurprising that one, really. I mean, come on now. And 256 TMUs. Now, I know what you're going to say, but, dude, let's just be honest here. How is that going to work when the TDP of the card, you know, the actual performance, the actual power envelope of the card is so much lower than the fully-fledged Fury X? Well, glad you asked. Many are probably guessing you've understood this already, but it's going to have a slower core clock. Now, we don't know what this core clock is actually going to end up being. We can probably make a sort of rough guess, um... By the by, the sheer deduction of the fact that the um, GPU is supposedly going to be within an 85 to 90 percent the performance of the Fury X, so in other words, the Nano is going to be let's say 85 percent as fast as the Fury X, which may give you a hint to the final performance of the card. Uh, but once again, it's only a guess. It could also be what another option, and this is purely speculation. These, the actual GPUs, the actual fully fledged Furies, oh sorry, the Fiji XTs that go in, they might be super duper selected, like the ultimate, you know, best case scenario, the the silicon lottery winners, if you will. In other words, they are the ones that happen to run at the lowest voltage. Um, and therefore you can get away with slightly less power. As many people will know, you can have two CPUs and one will overclock, just for the sake of argument, from 3.5 GHz to 4.5 GHz, but use slightly less uh, power. And obviously overclocking not necessarily what we're doing here, but you can kind of understand where we're going with this. By the way, guys, there's also an article. If you want a, a full breakdown of this stuff, you can see, like, old graphics on the screen and all that jazz, which is linked in the video description. But what about the Fury? Now, I actually think the Fury, depending on the end pricing, might be kind of the more interesting card. The reason I think that is that if the pricing is, is aggressive enough, it will be a card which is considerably more powerful than the R9 290X, but because AIBs, the, basically the board partners from AMD, let's just for example say Sapphire, they can go in, produce their own version of the cool design, and rather than AMD's very strict specs with the Fury X. The reason I think that could be very useful is because if we can overclock the Fury, or the Fury does indeed feature higher core clocks, it could be that we, we're we not that much behind the Fury X in terms of raw performance. Remember, it's still using the same high bandwidth memory configuration, 4GB HBM1, 4096 bit interface, all of that jazz, but it might have a considerably nicer <laughs> and less aggressive price tag but obviously this is just a bit of speculation but anyway supposedly the gpu will feature 3584 stream processors this basically will mean that the 64 gcn units from the fury x is going to be cut down to 56 tmus will also see a reduction to 224 but that's still not bad. So this GPU is still going to be certainly 4K capable. I mean, let's face it, it's more than 4K capable. But it's going to be a rather a very aggressive solution for those who are considering running perhaps Crossfire. So, for example, if, you, if you're if you looking for a cheaper solution for Crossfire, but you don't necessarily want to play, pay that uh, 
that Fury X Premium, but you still want a really powerful 4K solution or virtual reality solution, then this might be for you. I have to also wax lyrically for a moment and say that it's actually really good because <sighs> while I've said before, and I'll say it again, the, the Maxwell lineup is not the most interesting of GPUs. I've got to say that the tie, the, the, the 980 tie, is really holding its own at the moment regarding the Fury X and the Fury line up is going to really have to do a price war with NVIDIA because yes, you've got certain games which are going to run better on uh, NVIDIA hardware. Yes, you're going to have certain games which are going to run better on AMD hardware, but there's no clear winner. Which means that really, there's only a couple of ways that AMD or NVIDIA can entice you to buy a card. Let's just, for the sake of argument, say you've got a GTX 680, right? Which is still a reasonable card, but if you're running at those ultra-high resolutions, let's say you're, you're saying, hmm, maybe I should go for 4K finally. Well, okay. Now you've actually got a choice, because you can't just say, well, I'm going to go with NVIDIA or I'm going to go with AMD. It's not like the days when like the 9700 Pro was released, just for the sake of argument, or the, uh, well, I don't know, 8800 GTX, when there was a clear winner between the two, you know, uh, generations of cards. So this is actually going to be really good for vendors. It means that they have to compete on drivers, in other words, really stable drivers, as much um, optimization as possible. It means they're going to have to compete on pricing, which is very good for the end consumer, let's face it. And they're going to have to compete on features and other bits and bobs, which all of this is really, really good for, once again, the end consumer, you and I. Let's face it, even if you're fairly wealthy, if you can save like £100 or you know $150 or whatever it is equivalent in your particular currency with like a high-end setup, you're going to do it because that extra cash can be either thrown in the bank, it can be thrown onto games, it can be thrown on a better monitor, it can be thrown on like another SSD, whatever. Anyway, you notice how I give all of those suggestions and I don't suggest they like, paying the gas bill. Uh, good old gamer mentality. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.